So I just got this box in from an online auction that I won. Uh, I paid roughly $100 shipped for this lot. There's 20 cameras in here. They're all digital cameras, and they're all supposed to be point and shoot digital cameras. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this box, and we are gonna take a peek and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, I saw this one in the, in the auction picture. Pretty excited about this. The camera has some sort of chocolate or chocolatey substance on the SD card door. That's kind of gross. I always love hearing that Pentax little flute noise whenever you power on the camera. Puts a smile on my face every time. Let's see what we got in there. Oh, okay. I wondered why it was rattling around, and that makes sense because there's just some cameras that are about to fall out. So, I've been doing this for seven years and I've seen cameras packaged in all sorts of ways. This actually isn't bad because at least there's some air cushions in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this box on the ground and then we're gonna go through the 20 cameras in here and our target value for this lot is going to be $300. So we'll see if we can hit that $300 value number. Like we were looking at, there's a number of loose cameras in front. I'm just gonna start with the one that was on top, which is a Sanyo E1600TP digital camera. Uh, let's see, 14 megapixels. So this was probably released sometime in the last uh, six or eight years, I would say. I always try to power it on and see if it works. Uh, sometimes you get lucky. It's like playing the dice. I'll turn on. Oh, it did. Oh, please recharge the battery. <laughs> it just turned off. So we had just enough charge in that battery to be able to turn on and then automatically turn off. Cosmetically, it looks to be in decent condition. As you can see, there's no major issues here. So this uses a the, one of the most common battery types available uh, for digital cameras that was ever made, which is the Olympus Li42 equivalent or the Fujifilm NP45. This was the battery that was in there. And then I'm just gonna use a replacement Pentax battery and you can see that they are the same and they're the same milliamp hours as well. Let's give it a shot. Can't really test a camera if it just turns on and off and that's it. Okay, now it's prompting me through the menu. So I'm gonna go through that menu real quick. Lens looks decent, has a little bit of grime and stuff on it. The lens moves in and out smoothly, which is good. And I'm gonna try taking a picture. The flash is set to auto and it should be good to go. There we go, flash fires. I'm gonna go in and delete the picture and delete anything that was on here. So because all of these cameras are untested, some of them won't even work when you put in a new battery. So this camera in good tested working condition with a battery and a replacement charger, you're looking at a pretty low value, a value of about $25 on this Sanyo. So about $25 on this camera. So I'll go ahead and put it down here. Oh yeah, I saw this one in the, in the auction picture. Pretty excited about this. It's a Canon PowerShot A400. This was released by Canon, I think probably like 15 years ago now. And this older type of digital camera, Digicam, uh, has gotten pretty popular really since the pandemic. I'm gonna pull some batteries out. They look to be in decent shape, but got some new ones here. And the battery compartment looks clean. So that's definitely one of the things that you wanna check is the battery compartment. So check that first. If there is battery corrosion inside of your battery compartment in your, in your camera, you can fix it normally using like a wire brush and something like vinegar. So give that a shot first before you toss it. Uh, a lot of these have been stored and unused for many years. So oftentimes these cameras have lens issues. So I just put the batteries in. I'm gonna go ahead and power it on and we'll see, we'll see what it does. It does power on. Lens looks decent. Quite a bit of wear and scuffing around the edges of the camera, which is just cosmetic. Cosmetic. So overall in fair condition, We'll go ahead and test it. Yep. So this camera is in fine working condition. If you were to throw in a memory card, like I have some, like a two gig memory card here, something like that alongside the camera. Uh, this camera in fine working condition with some, some of the scuffs and condition issues that it has is gonna sell for about $49. Um, if this was in good or very good working condition with like a box or something, you'd be looking at a value of somewhere between 70 and hundred dollars on this at current prices. And like I mentioned in previous videos, the, 
pricing of cameras always fluctuates depending on the stock that comes in and the stock that goes out and the demand from customers, from people that are interested in buying their childhood cameras or they have a camera they've used for years and it just broke and they want the same exact model. So two for two so far, it's a good start. Hopefully we can, we can keep on the train here. Okay, Fujifilm, this is one of their waterproof, early waterproof digital cameras. And it's a Fujifilm FinePix XP10. So these are waterproof cameras, so they have an extra rubber bumper inside of the battery door that adds uh, additional waterproofing capabilities. So sometimes the battery latch is a little bit harder to get on than a normal camera. This is actually gonna use the same battery as the other one, that first Sanyo. No power, okay. I'm gonna pull in a, a battery from my little battery supply here. It's a good noise to hear. So the camera did power on. See the menu screen there? I'm gonna go ahead and go through the menu. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Let's see if this camera works. Zoom out a little bit. Flash fires, that's good. So this Fine, Fujifilm FinePix XP10 black digital camera in good working condition is gonna be worth about $35 on a website like eBay. These are kind of cool cameras. I think they're waterproof to like 10 feet maybe, and they can handle like short drops if you were to like drop the camera. So if I was particularly rough on a camera, this might be a good one to have. They also take reasonably decent pictures. So very, very popular early waterproof camera here. All right. Kodak Easy Share Z1485. So appears to have uh, camera has some sort of chocolate or chocolatey substance on the SD card door. That's kind of gross. And the grip is worn and has a little bit of fuzz on it. So that's all stuff that I would have to clean off, obviously, before I were to to list it and sell it. Battery compartment looks clean. It's just looking inside of there. So that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the batteries in now. Make sure I put them in the right way. And it does, the blue light came on. This is a Kodak Easy Share Z1485, which is a 5X zoom, I think, oh, 14 megapixel, wow. So pretty compact, um, but has a decent optical zoom just quite a bit of lens noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot. It's set to auto. Whenever I test cameras, I like to just move them into auto because it makes it much easier to, to test the camera. So we're in auto here. Yep, flash fires. Lens glass looks good. A lot of times with these lenses that move in and out for especially when you get into like Panasonic Lumixes, that's one of the first issues. Is the lens just exposed? exposed? The lens just exposed and the lens correct? Yeah. Bit -a -bit -a -bit -a and the lens glass actually gets scratches or micro scratches on it that generally don't affect the picture quality but do affect the value of the camera. And certainly if they get deep enough that they're gouges, they can reflect light and cause a lot of issues with picture quality. This one, however, looks good. So once I clean off the chocolate and the fuzz, the hot fuzz on the camera, um, we're looking at a value with a memory card on this camera of somewhere around $40. So good start so far. Okay, yeah. So this is something you don't want to see when you pull uh, pull a camera out of a of a box is the lens partially exposed because especially if it's been this way for a number of years, jostling around and bumping around and wherever it's being stored or handed from person to person, that can cause a lot of issues. So I don't have high hopes for this, but we will again always give cameras a try. It does turn on. The lens moves in and out. No, no. Lens does not move. Let me try turning it on and off again. Yeah, it's having a bit of issues with that lens. Okay, I'm gonna have to mess around with this one and uh, I'm not gonna assign a value to it. We'll see if we can get that, maybe that lens cleaned off. There may be a little bit of uh, fine dust or particles inside and around the lens area that are causing some issues. But even still, if this was in good working condition, it's an eight megapixel Polaroid. 
um, Polaroid I-835. If this was in good working condition, it'd have a value of like 15 or 20 bucks. So I'm not gonna assign any value to this one right now. Oh, beefy. So let me show you this. So let's compare it with the Fujifilm. Look at this, this guy. Look how wide that thing is. This is a Fujifilm FinePix A210, which is a 3.2 megapixel camera. We're starting to get into the vein of the first camera that I ever used, which was an Olympus, I think a four megapixel. I just bought what I believe to be my childhood camera that I'm gonna do a video on that was the very first camera I used for years and years. And I think the memory type was either uh, a smart media card, which are these big, big guys. If that rings any bells, if you guys have used those before. Um, just for size comparison, this is a SD card. So you can see how much bigger the smart media card was, but these only got up to about 128 megabytes in size. So this little two gig card is like 20 times the size of this, the, this card. Anyway, bit of a tangent. Battery compartment looks quite good. So we're kind of looking out so far. A lot of the times the AA battery trays are gonna have acid and corrosion in them. So I'm gonna make it to shooting still images and then move it, the lens out, and then hit the power button on the top. Huh. Okay, it turns on, there's a red light blinking on the back. So, oh, green light came on. Okay, now we got a menu showing. And the, the screen looks good. One of the first issues you'll see is the, the screen actually going bad and you'll see huge wavy distorted purple lines. Very, very common. Oh no, this camera uses XD cards. And I have one of those too. So this is an XD card. XD card? We're doing memory card history here. We're going down memory card lane. XD card, SD card. Where's that big guy? Big guy. Smart media card. All of these vintage and these two are kind of obsolete, really. There's not any major manufacturers making these, so they've kind of gone up in price on the used market. Actually, I have a video on XD cards as well, if that would pique your interest. It just goes about the history of XD cards, the different types. Um, I learned a lot even making that video because I've sold and used many XD cards over the years. So I'm going to turn the camera back on with the memory card inside. Okay, so memory card in, shows it can take 82 pictures. We're going to test it. Nice, took a picture. And overall condition's good. The lens glass could just use a little bit of a cleaning. And the value on this camera in good working condition even five years ago was like five or ten dollars and now in good working condition with the memory card actually the xd card may be worth as much as the camera that xd card is worth about 20 that i put in that wasn't included with this camera but um, just selling the camera standalone in good working condition you're looking at a value of about 30 dollars on this camera Take out some uh, wrap. Oh, this one's got batteries hanging out of it. Got jostled around during shipping. Oh, neat. Pentax Optio. It's a Pentax Optio M20 AA power digital camera. And the battery tray again looks good. We're really getting pretty lucky here so far. Nice. Lots some batteries. Woo. I always love hearing that Pentax little flute noise whenever you power on the camera. Puts a smile on my face every time. Okay, camera power's on, and that's why it puts a smile on my face. A little bit of lens noise here. This is a, a Pentax Optio M20, like I said which was a kind of compact budget point and shoot, I think, so, yeah, seven megapixel uh, digital camera. So in the Digicam club, um, pretty decent camera, actually. You know what? I think Pentax is really, 
from their waterproof Optio WG line to a lot of their older point and two digital cameras, they make some pretty cool cameras. When you compare them with what was available at the time, they just didn't get quite the notoriety uh, and brand recognition that like a Canon or a Sony or a Nikon got. Okay, so looks to be in good working condition. No memory card inside. You pair this with a memory card, you're looking at a value of about $35 currently. Okay, next camera. Pretty well used uh, budget Fujifilm Finepix J10 point and shoot digital camera. This was one that I think was kitted out at places like Costco and Walmart and was really just kind of a bare bones digital camera of the time. So this one has an old battery in it. All those old batteries that you get, I'm not throwing them away. I'm putting them in a separate area that I'm going to recharge and test later because I try to utilize whatever I can in all of this kind of recycling process. So I'm gonna put another battery in. Power's on. And appears to be working fine. Let me uh, try taking a picture. The flash is set to off. I'm gonna turn it on. And it does take a picture and the flash fires. Lens looks good. Let's move it in and out again and make sure that it's working fine. Yep. Okay, so a fair amount of wear on this guy. Um, so the value of this camera in fair working condition with just the camera and the battery is gonna be a value of about $25. If you included a memory card and a charger with it, the value would probably go up to about 35. So 25 on this guy. Oh, we got another big guy. <laughs> Nikon Coolpix 2000. Look at this monster. Two megapixel camera. Sweet. I, I just, they still put a smile on my face. This makes me think of the old Dell and Gateway cameras too, when they were all making cameras at that point. Uh, there were so many manufacturers making cameras back then. And uh, granted, a lot of them used uh, the same manufacturing facilities, but. This uses compact flash for memory. Oh, I just somehow powered it on. Oh, the batteries are working. Wow, it just says it's flashing. Oh, now battery's exhausted, okay. Just put some new batteries in there. Turns off and on again. Still is flashing no memory card, which is okay. Don't have a compact flash card with me handy right now, so I'll, I'll test that part of it later, but I'm gonna assume it's gonna be working. Let me try taking a picture real quick. Sometimes it won't let you take a picture without a memory card inside, unless you change a menu setting. Yeah, this looks to be one. Let's see if I can figure it out real quick. It's not letting me do anything without a memory card inside. Okay, I'll test that later. But assuming that it is in fine working condition like it appears to be, not much value on this at the current time, we're looking at a value of about $20 on this camera. Let's keep moving on. Oh, nice. Newer uh, Nikon Coolpix S3600 point and shoot digital camera. Um, so that's kind of a cool little guy. Sold a lot of these. It's a 20 megapixel 8X optical zoom. Widely produced, no battery. Dang. Battery, Nikon ENL 19 battery, which is what it uses. Power it on. Green light comes on. And so does that. So good start there. Let's go ahead and lens moves in and out. It appears, yep. So one of the first things that I always check with these older Nikons is they're prone to getting dust in the lens, or excuse me, dust in the sensor. And this one does have dust in the sensor. I can see it when I zoom in and out. So what you'll see when you zoom in and out on this is, so we're starting all the way not zoomed in. Now I'm going to zoom all the way out. 
And what you'll see is you zoom in and out is actually a, what looks to be a microfiber is stuck maybe inside of the, the sensor. So that's not even something you would really know if you were gonna tr try to use this camera until you actually zoomed out because when you don't zoom out, you don't really even see it. So if you zoom the lens all the way out, I've seen, and I haven't personally tried this, but I've seen people try to use vacuums to suck the dust out because a lot of the times that's when the dust gets inside is when the lens is fully zoomed out. So you can try using a blower. A lot of times that won't work. I've seen people use vibration to try to jostle the sensor enough that the dust comes off. Um, so there's a number of different things that you can do. So with this Nikon S3600, I'm gonna do a little bit more testing and see if I can dust, get the dust issue resolved. If I do, this camera in used good working condition would be worth $50. If I don't and sell it as is, powering on and working fine, you're looking at a value of somewhere around $15 or $20. So I'm gonna go on the lower end here and say 15 for this camera for now. All right, more. Whoa, battery came flying out of there. We got some fiery ones down here, I guess. I get all the, man, they didn't use any bubble wrap. No bubble wrap. Just a bunch of loose batteries and stuff down here. Uh, Nikon Coolpix L4. Old point and shoot digital camera, four megapixel, three x optical zoom, or three times optical zoom for my international viewers. Okay, this camera, according to Goggle, was released in 2006 for an MSRP of $109. So this camera is about 17 years old. Uh, like I said, AA powered camera uses a smaller sized SD memory card. Appears to be in good condition, actually. A lot of times these cameras get beat up because they're so small, you could actually easily fit them inside of a pocket. Woo! Whoop! Out of this window right here, I can see a grapefruit tree. Kind of cool. A lot of citrus still in Arizona. Very popular thing to grow in the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s. But pretty water intensive, so you don't see them a lot in the desert areas like I live in. Camera power's on. Wow, noisy lens. You hear that? But appears to be working. You'll see these got a little bit of wear. I'm gonna go ahead and try to take a picture here and we'll see if it takes a picture. It does, the flash fires. Lens glass looks good. Use a little bit of cleaning. But otherwise, this is in quite good condition. So I'm gonna pull a smaller sized memory card out. Such a cool, the startup screen on this is, is really neat. Let me, uh, let me do it again. Startup screen. It's like an old computer starting up, kinda. So, uh, yeah, starts up again. SD card is being read. Take another picture. Flash fires, looks good. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave that memory card in here and sell this as a kit with the memory card. Memory card only adds a few bucks of extra value. Um, but I like when, when I sell cameras to be able to provide whoever ends up buying them um, something that's working out of the gate. So, neat. Uh, this camera was similar to the other ones just a few years ago. It was only five or ten bucks, and now the value of this in used good working condition with a memory card is going to be around $35. Okay, another AA. Canon PowerShot A480. I was in, I was working for an online retailer when this camera was released by Canon, and I remember doing sales training for it. Noisy little, noisy camera, but uh, still takes good pictures and very color accurate. Okay, that's a common, common problem with these cameras is loose battery doors because that's the first thing that goes, oh look, the plastic just Plastic just flaked off when I opened the battery door. Nope. The battery door is not closing fully, which can cause issues with the battery staying in and then the camera actually powering on. So I'm gonna go ahead and try powering it on. 
does power on, but it's flashing the low battery sign. So that means that the contact point, there's not enough contact point to provide current proper levels of juice to the camera to get it running. So what I'm gonna do now is just hold the battery door up fully when I turn the camera on and see if that solves the problem. So I'm holding it really, really tight. There is no flashing uh, battery sign. So that is clearly what's going on. The camera is otherwise working fine. So I've seen very inventive measures on how to fix this. I've seen people weld little tiny pieces that would enable the door to shut. I've seen people screw in uh, pieces. I've seen people use duct tape to hold the battery in. Normally that's what I would do because you'd need to take the AA batteries out and I'm not super good with welding or anything like that. So I believe the camera value, uh, the Canon PowerShot A480 is around $40 to $50 in good working condition, as is with this battery door issue. I'm gonna go ahead and assign a value of $20. You could probably get close to $25 for it um, because it would have to be reinforced in order for the camera to function normally. So we'll say 20 bucks on this camera. Okay, ooh, this one's nice. Like I said, they're all just loose down there in the box right now. Canon PowerShot L330, this was one of the main reasons why I bought this lot, was this very camera, because this camera in good working condition is worth about $100 to $125. Cosmetically, it looks good. This camera uses a Canon NB11L battery, and I happen to have some of those available. So let's see. Got a replacement one right here. This camera is, I think, like a 14 or a 16 megapixel 10x optical zoom uh, camera by Canon that was released like maybe eight or nine years ago. Still pretty popular. Takes HD video. Um, it is not powering on. Make sure I have the battery. Yeah, battery is oriented right. Whenever a camera doesn't power on, I always assume it's my fault. And most of the time it is. But in this case, it doesn't look like the camera's powering on. I just used this camera battery inside of another camera when I was testing earlier. So I know that this camera battery works. So this camera is not powering on. Looks like there could be some sort of lens issue. So that's, oh, there's a screw. Okay, so there's a screw loose down here too. Just noticed that. People always say I've got a screw loose, but this camera definitely has a screw loose. Something's going on with this camera, not powering on, damaged in some way. So that's a bummer. This would have been worth about $100 to $125 if it was working. If I test something and it's broken, I don't sell it as untested. I sell this as broken. So I would list this in eBay uh, in the four parts section. And this camera four parts is going to have a value of about $15 with free shipping. So once you ship it out, not much value, but a little bit. Bummer. Okay, cool. Canon PowerShot SD630. This is an even older Canon PowerShot 6 megapixel camera. Silver guy. Um, pretty well built metal. And it uses the Canon NB4L battery. I'm going to go ahead and try turning it on and see if it works. Oh, it does power on. Yeah. Nice. Oh, lens sounds normal. What you'll see often with this camera is the lens is very noisy. Very, very noisy but this one is within uh, normal range from a decibel level. I'm gonna go ahead and try taking a picture and see if it works. It does. Nice. Oh, it's got some tape on the side. Somebody's name on the side. Oh, cut it off cleanly. Oh, dog, look at that. Whoop, boo. LCD looks decent. So within, uh, within a good guideline. So cool. I have sold many, many of these cameras and it's siblings like the Canon PowerShot SD600, the Panon Canon PowerShot SD750. They all came out at similar times and uh, it's actually a pretty heavy camera, well-built. Um, 
kind of made to last. The value on this camera in used good working condition, I do have an extra charger that I will pair it with along with a USB cable. Once you put that bundle together, you're looking at a value of about $45 on this camera. That's cool. All right, we've got a few left here. All right, we got Pinky. Pinky, Pinky camera. A uh, little bit of wear in the battery compartment. This is a Sanyo 7.1 megapixel. First thing I notice is that the top is recessed a little bit and it's not where it's supposed to be. So that can sometimes affect the battery tray from working and, and everything. Um, I'll try to mess around with that later. See, you can't even press the on off button on this camera. Oh, got it. Look at that. Wow. Just uh, popped right back into place. Huh. Nice. All right, let's uh, put some AA batteries in it and give it a shot. Sanyo for quite a long period made uh, more budget-minded uh, cameras and camcorders with really basic menus that take uh, give you the full Digicam experience. A noisy lens, pretty low uh, low resolution screen, but camera is working. And pink is actually a pretty desirable color and adds a fair amount of value for really any digital camera. Um, just because they made, the manufacturers always made less of specific colors like pink, even though it was more popular. It was very seasonally based around like Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. So not, as much quantity in the pink cameras, so adds a little bit of value. And use good working condition like this with a memory card, we're looking at a value of about $25. So 25 on the Sanyo. All right, we're going from pink to pink. We got pinks back to back. This is a Polaroid 12 megapixel camera, the Polaroid i1236. Another budget AA powered point and two camera. And throw some batteries in. Memory card is going to be in the bottom here. No memory card inside. LCD's got some wear, some scratches, as you can see there. Oh, power's on. Very uncommon to have this amount of AA powered cameras that are actually working. Like we've had a few issues, obviously, with cameras, but normally your success rate is is a little bit lower than that, is what I found. Lens moves in and out. Noisy. Wow, look at that. Healthy flash on this camera. LCD can use a cleaning, I'll do that later. Um, but in fine working condition, this camera is going to have a similar value of about $25. Uses a uh, micro USB cable for memory. So, cool. Another uh, about $25 camera there. Kind of bread and butter stuff there. I got four cameras left. Oh, another Nikon Coolpix L4. Got some old batteries in there. Look at that. Would you look at that? We got twins. You know what's funny about that? I am actually a twin. And Ryan, if you're watching, I love you. I hope your vacation's going good. Okay, power's on, good. Looks to be, maybe this was like a pair. Maybe whoever, had the other camera, had this other camera. It was a husband or wife or something, or two kids in a family that, that both had the same camera because their conditions are pretty similar in good working condition. Wow, nice. A little noisy on the lens. I'm gonna assign a value on this guy of $30. $30 on this. Cool. All right, all right. Kodak Easy Share M550 in kind of a bronze color. They made a bunch of different colors of this camera. Uh, almost every color under the sun. And like I said before, camera, uh, camera prices do vary based on the color. Strange as that sounds. It's all based on uh, scarcity, I guess. Oh, it does power on. Ooh! Yikes. This is the sound of an older Kodak EasyShare. 
this is how almost every code, older Kodak Easy Share sounds, the lens. And this is within normal operating range from Kodak for a used camera of this age. From what I've seen personally, and I've sold hundreds of Kodak Easy Shares in the M series, M530, M550, M570, there's a bunch that are very similar to this, and they all have lenses that sound like that over time. So this is a, four, a 12 megapixel camera with a 5X optical zoom. Noisy lens, that would be noted. Uh, let me test it, make sure the flash fires. It does. So this camera is in fine, I would say fine working condition. Just definitely note that noisy lens so the customer know, so whoever buys it knows what they're getting. No memory card. Um, this camera in fine working condition with a charger. And again, the charger that I buy these chargers normally for like six bucks. So just factor that into my cost. So we're looking at a value of this camera with a charger uh, of around $30. Down to two. We're down to two. And let's see if the box saved the best for last. I hope it did. We've got a Nikon Coolpix S51, which is a slim, um, Nikon camera that was also released when I was doing online sales. Um, and we sold a lot of this camera and the Nikon Coolpix S50, the Coolpix S52, the Coolpix X60. There's a lot of cameras that look very similar to this. The most common issue that I see with this camera is that there's often dead pixels on the screen, which isn't necessarily affect performance, but can affect um, the pleasurability of using it when you see dead pixels everywhere. So that is also something you would note if you were to sell on a camera like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and see if it works, see if the battery in there is charged. Nope. This uses a Nikon ENEL8 battery, which is a very thin battery compared to a lot of other batteries. So the life of this battery that I've seen is generally one of the worst. So I'm gonna go try and find a battery real quick for that. Okay, we've got two batteries. Two batteries to try, just in case. Just like always, do the Boy Scout motto and come prepared. No power. Oh, yeah. So one thing about these old Nikon Coolpixes especially is sometimes when you press the power on button, you need to wait a little bit for the camera to actually power on. So that is uh, pretty common, I would say. And in this case, it did power on which is good. This was one of Nikon's first uh, slim point and shoot cameras to utilize VR, which is vibration reduction. So if your hands are shaking or like me, you've had some caffeine in the day, uh, it will actually reduce that. I'm gonna go ahead and try taking a picture real quick. Took a picture, the flash did not fire. I'm gonna set it to uh, force flash. And we'll try taking another one. Yes, does work, nice. This particular camera, the Nikon Coolpix S51, with a working battery and a charger and a memory card. This uses regular SD memory. You're looking at a value of about $30 here. So $30 for this cool little slim uh, Nikon Coolpix. Neat camera. And we are down to the last camera. Ladies and gentlemen, we are down to the last camera. It is a Nikon Coolpix S6500. And there, move that battery out of the way here. So this camera has definitely seen some use. When you look at the LCD, you see the LCD protector has a lot of wear. Heck of a lot of wear. Pretty common with older Nikons. When we actually turn the camera on and hopefully this camera works, it won't be quite as noticeable. So I have a replacement battery. This camera uses the Nikon ENL19. And ENL19 uh, variant batteries by other manufacturers. Also notice that the screws have a little bit of wear on the bottom. So I put the battery in, I'm gonna turn it on. It does turn on. It's set to Spanish language, which is pretty common. Uh, a lot of times they're set to French, uh, sometimes to Japanese or Chinese, so we'll try to move out of that. The other thing I just noticed is the camera has an indent and is broken on the top and there's some separation. It's going to be really hard to fix because it's caused by an impact and the metal is actually bent right here. Beep, beep. 
Now it's not powering on. It was just powering on. And this camera battery is definitely charged. Yeah, not looking good. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a little more testing. There's also a broken part inside of the LCD screen. There's a blue reflection towards the bottom of the camera. So this camera's got some issues, regardless of whether it's working or not. Um, got a broken top part of the LCD screen. So I'll try to mess around with this more and see if I can get it working. But um, in four parts condition, the value on the Nikon S6500 is not going to have much value. Normally this would be something I would lot with other broken cameras and sell it to people that are more knowledgeable than me about actually fixing tougher to, tougher to fix problems or potentially further scrapping the camera out. So I'm going to assign a $5 value here. That was the last camera inside of this box. So that was one of the first boxes that I've done that is just uh, more of the compact point and shoot digital cameras. A lot of the other lots I've done have been more mixed because that's mostly what I get in. And I wanted to get your, your all thoughts on what you like better or if you like them both equally or anything you would like to see more of product wise. And I'll try to try to make it happen. Um, but it was really fun just going through and going through and getting some nostalgic looks at cameras that I've used and sold in the past. Um, and I'm sure many of you out there have, have used the same models or similar models. And it's just been, it's really fun to make these videos and go through. Um, if you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe. Really appreciate it.